In an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, one electrophile supplied by the reagents, E+, substitutes for another electrophile, H+. In this video, we'll look at a general mechanistic paradigm for electrophilic aromatic substitution, a reaction coordinate diagram, and talk about the different types of active electrophiles, E+, that are generated that can react with aromatics such as benzene. The mechanisms of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions typically begin with generation of the active electrophile, but this can happen through a number of different mechanisms that we'll talk about in detail in future videos. And so here I want to focus on the steps of electrophilic aromatic substitution that are truly general, that follow generation of the active electrophile. The first general step is one we're very familiar with from reactions of alkenes with electrophiles. It's coordination of the aromatic pi bond to E+. This is association of the electrophile to the aromatic pi system, or A sub E. And the intermediate that's generated by this step contains a new bond between the electrophile and one of the carbons of the aromatic pi system. This intermediate is called a sigma complex because of the new sigma bond between the electrophile and one of the aromatic carbons. One important thing to note about these sigma complex intermediates is that they always have a number of resonance structures that show the delocalization of positive charge over multiple positions. In fact, what we can say in general is that after the electrophile adds to one of the positions within benzene, the positive charge is shared by the carbons that are ortho and para with respect to the position that bound to the substituent. It's also important to note about the sigma complex that this molecule is non-aromatic because the carbon that formed the bond to the electrophile is now sp3 hybridized. This has important implications that we'll return to in a second. To re-establish aromaticity and generate the final product, the second elementary step here involves loss of a proton. And it doesn't really matter which resonance form of the sigma complex that we use to show this loss of a proton. I'll use this one just because it's closest to the final product. And although these curved arrows may look a little bit complicated, I'm just shifting the double bonds around so that they match the positions of the double bond in the product shown here. This proton transfer step restores aromaticity, making the reaction exothermic or energy releasing overall. Because the sigma complex is non-aromatic, the first step of electrophilic aromatic substitution is universally the rate determining step. Since we have to surmount a barrier that includes, at the very least, the aromatic stabilization energy of the starting material, which in the case of benzene is about 35 kilocalories per mole. The step that follows the proton transfer step tends to be heavily downhill in energy because aromaticity is restored. And so for things like the reaction rate and site selectivity, we worry a lot more about the addition of the electrophile step rather than the proton transfer step. It's really this large uphill climb, climbing the mountain out of aromaticity, is one way to think about this, that dictates the site selectivity and relative reaction rates of, for example, substituted benzenes in EAS reactions. The different types of reaction conditions used in EAS reactions are really aimed at generating different types of active electrophiles, E+. Essentially, the strategy here to surmount aromaticity is to generate an electrophile that's so reactive that the aromatic compound can't help but form a bond to it. Let's look at the five different types of active electrophiles we'll see in EAS reactions now. The first reaction type is halogenation, and the active electrophile here comes from either the formation of a complex between the halogen and the Fe X3, where X is Br or Cl catalyst, and that looks something like this, or from X plus itself, which comes from loss of an Fe X4 minus anion from this thing. Just to keep things simple, we can think of the electrophile here really as X plus. Whether it's actually formed or not isn't terribly important. Nitration is an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction that installs the nitro group, and the electrophilic species here is the highly reactive NO2 plus cation. This is isoelectronic with carbon dioxide with the very important difference that the central atom is now positively charged rather than neutral. Sulfonation installs the sulfonyl group, and the active electrophile here is a species with two double bonds to the sulfur atom plus an additional OH group and a formal positive charge at sulfur. Friedel-Crafts alkylation conditions encourage the dissociation of a leaving group, a halogen leaving group, 
from an alkyl halide Rx, and this generates a carbocation R+. We'll also see friedel crafts alkylation reactions where these carbocations are generated through other means, such as protonation of an alkene or protonation of an alcohol followed by the loss of water. Carbocations have some issues, not least among which is rearrangement, and one strategy to get around this involves the use of what are called acillium ions in a friedel crafts acylation reaction. These aciliums are the key electrophilic species in these reactions. The reason I wanted to show all of these species together on one slide is to emphasize the point that the active electrophile in EAS reactions is a highly unstable species. We're seeing a lot of atoms here that we're not used to seeing with positive charge, such as a halogen atom, nitrogen, and even sulfur. These electrophilic atoms are really the key to driving the first step of electrophilic aromatic substitution. And understanding how each of these is generated is key to a deeper understanding of EAS, since the steps that follow the generation of the active electrophile follow the general pattern that we've seen in this video.